Okay, welcome back to part four of lecture 13 of aerospace propulsion. Um, so let's think about the full impact of what happens when the engines get heavier. So basically, increasing the engines does more than just add drag. So if we increase the power plant weight, it leads to a bigger and thus heavier overall aircraft, which means we have to have extra fuel capacity, which means we have extra structural weight. So the thrust requirement then goes up even more. So this would lead to increasing the engine size even further. This is how we would realistically do this. We would consider these effects if we were doing a real engine design, but that's getting a little too complicated for considering what we want to do here. So we'll instead uh, just look using the model that we've developed for our corrected net thrust that accounts for engine weight. So our, we have a simplified approach and we have our corrected net thrust that's equal to the effective net thrust from before minus the engine weight divided by the aircraft L over D. We need a scaling point to be able to use our, our reference and uh, we can use it as a scaling point that the power plant plus nacelle would be about 12 tons for a three meter diameter fan. Now, finally, we see an optimum in specific fuel consumption. So the specific fuel consumption falls and then begins to rise again. So here it looks like the specific fuel consumption that gives the lowest fan pressure ratio is around somewhere between 1.6 and 1.7. If we have a very low fan pressure ratio, that means the engine might be too large uh, for installation on the aircraft uh, or transporting, um, and, but also will have very low noise. Now, as we just talked about, this calculation is pretty simplified and it's not really sufficient to uh, choose our fan pressure ratio. Um, basically, it doesn't penalize uh, higher fan pressure ratios enough. Um, so sort of from the infinite wisdom of the authors of our textbook, we will actually choose fan pressure ratio of 1.5 moving forward for our design. Now, if we keep that fan pressure ratio fixed and go back to our assumption of equal bypass and jet velocities, um, wh what we see is that we actually get a minimum in specific fuel consumption for a bypass to core jet velocity ratio that's not one, it's a little bit lower than that, it's 0.92. Small effect compared to the value at one, right? I mean, uh, here we've got a, you know, there's a couple one or two percent change in specific fuel consumption, but that matters for aircraft. So finally, I'd like you guys to think about why it should be the case that this re a ratio of less than one actually yields the lowest specific fuel consumption, right? Previously, we were thinking that one would be the best. Why would something less than that actually reduce the specific fuel consumption? So think about this for a minute. Try to come up with an answer for yourself before you move on to the next part of the video.